Welcome to our lecture online. Here's another very interesting problem from the JE advanced test and it deals with the buoyancy force. Now let's read the problem. It says a solid sphere of radius r and density rho is attached to one end of a massless spring of force constant k. The other end of the spring is connected to another solid sphere of radius r and density 3 rho. The complete arrangement is placed in a liquid of density 2 rho and is allowed to reach equilibrium. The correct statement or statements are, well, here's four of them. And the bottom two are straightforward. It says the light sphere is partially submerged or the light sphere is completely submerged. So let's think about that. Let's have a container large enough to place in it that contraption. So it's filled with a liquid that has density 2 rho. And now we have two spheres, one that has density 3 rho and one that has density rho. They're connected together with a spring. And so I would expect the lighter sphere to go to the top, then have a spring, and then the heavier sphere at the bottom. So this is the sphere with density rho and the sphere with density 3 rho. So notice that the liquid has a density that's the average of the other two, which means that the total arrangement will just barely float. If you think about this, the average density of the two spheres, since they're the same size as 2 rho, the liquid is 2 rho, so then you expect things to be just like that, which means that the light sphere is completely submerged. That means D is correct and C is incorrect. But then what about the other two? The net elongation of the spring is 4 pi r cube rho g over 3k or 8 pi r cube rho g over 3k. And that of course depends upon the forces acting on here. But notice here that you can think of it this way. Let's take a look at the top, uh, the top sphere. We know that there's going to be a buoyancy force and there's going to be a weight. And of course, as the buoyancy force is greater than the weight, there's going to be the force acting on the spring, and the force on the spring is going to be equal to the buoyancy force minus the weight, the net force. All right, so knowing that, let's calculate those two components. Let's calculate the buoyancy force, which by definition is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid, which is mg of the liquid, and notice that the density is equal to mass over volume. That's going to be equal to, um, well, then the mass can be written as the density times volume. So the mass is going to be the density of the liquid times the volume of the displaced liquid, which is the same as the volume of the sphere, times g. So the buoyancy force is equal to the density of the liquid, which is going to be 2 times rho. The volume of the sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed, and g. That's the buoyancy force. So the buoyancy force can be calculated to be 8 thirds density rho pi r cubed g. Now what about the weight of the sphere? Now the weight of the sphere, the top sphere, is going to be equal to the weight that's going to be m times g, which is rho vg of the sphere. So in this case, we take the density of the sphere, which is uh, rho, the volume, 4 thirds pi r cubed, and g. Now that can be written as 4 thirds density rho pi r cubed g. And notice if we now want to calculate the force on the spring, the force on the spring, which is equal to the buoyancy force minus the weight, that's going to be equal to 8 thirds rho pi r cube, that's a cube, g minus 4 thirds rho pi r cube g, which is going to be equal to 4 thirds rho pi r cube g. So that's equal to the force on the spring. Now they didn't ask for the force on the spring, they asked for the net elongation. So in that case, we know that F equals Kx for a spring, so X equals F over K. So in this case, F would be 4 thirds, I'll write it like this, density pi 
r cubed g divided by k, and that would be the elongation of the spring. Is one of the answers. This one, and looks like it's 4 pi r cubed, 4 pi, no, 4 rho pi r cubed g over 3k. So it looks like answer A is correct and answer B is not. So the two correct answers are A and D. B and C are not correct, and that is how it's done. Quite a contraption, huh?